Where else? In China, it also happened. Yes. What happened in Estonia that time? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing happened in Estonia? People were just doing this? I love it. It was not really Estonian. Oh, I forgot the word in English. That's a good point. Uh, it was Lieberman. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Yes. Okay. But the situation was similar? Mm, or you had democracy? People elected their no, kings? No, no. Yeah. You had anarchy? Yeah. No. People were stealing from each other? No. What did you have? We didn't have a choice. <laughs> I think we had Let's a take three minutes, five or four minutes. You look up, not only on your smartphones, smart people, but also in some of the books that you have. I doubt that there's a story in any of those books. <laughs> uh, what about you? Uh, you don't have a pick, right? No. But at least it will tell you definitely something that happened with, uh, within that time. Who would like the big book? Huh? Who would like the big book? Uh, uh, until the Middle Ages, Estonia had been relatively, relatively quiet corner of Europe, inhabited by pagan tribes. Pagan tribes. And in what time? Until the Middle Ages. Thirteenth? Hey. Thirteenth century, more or less? Yeah, something oh, like that. Thirteenth century. What happened in the thirteenth century? The cocks of the lady in Yes. What happened at that time? Use your smartphones, smart people. The wall settlement toilet and holder of shield was granted city rights in 2000, no, 1248, and soon after joined the Hanstedic League along with the nearby cities Tortuberg and Wielanden. So, what happened in Estonia? You said that. Until this year, before 1248, pagan community. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So basically, they live in their own small taru and uh, yeah. Estonia was one of the last ones to be Christianized. Christianized. And uh, one they're called for crusade against the Damien. And this is a really interesting case. Damien is not here, but Damien is going to research about uh, the Crusades. It was because of the Crusades, all this group of people, we have them up here, all this group of people. Christian people, you cannot call them Catholics or Protestant because there was no such a thing at that time moving from England, from France, moving towards the sacred land uh, here, sorry. Uh, well, <laughs> here. Not on the map. Here, it is not even on the map. <laughs> moving towards this side, trying to get back the Holy Land. But at that moment, they also reached Estonia. That was the moment when, they, when Estonia became medieval, <laughs> around that time. Before that, there were only small settlements. They were trading, right? But it became medieval, and becoming medieval means this also. Joining the Hanseatic League yeah. means this. Is and that you have a wealth here? Yeah? It take a time because if they, if, as you said, they are not, a, they are not really Estonian. The idea was because the, the, the word Estonia comes from an Italian who called it the East land, the land, the land from the east. But they had their own identity, right? Yeah. They were their own groups. Yeah. But at that moment. When they joined this Hanseatic League, then the uh, the structure of feudalism, the idea of a group of people owning the land, 
giving it to the peasants, getting yeah, it returned, yeah. then was stopped. They got medieval, but it was not really, it was not really Estonia, but it was medieval. It wasn't called Estonia, but it was already the logic of the Middle Ages, specifically this economic exchange that yeah. we are talking about. We have the Danish then it comes Danish, then it comes uh, Swedish. Yes. And then there are these wars, then Russian, then Swedish again. <laughs> Somebody was interested also in the uh, in the Northern uh, War. Yes. The war. The war. The uh, Just for for contextualization, we are building a research project on um, different topics. They can. The idea is that they have a lot like a wider perspective of the, of the period of time, in this case Middle Ages, but then they choose specifically what they want to research about. Uh, your topic was? Art. Art during the Middle Ages. Art during the Middle Ages. Uh, trade during the Middle Ages. Trade. What was your topic, Anders? Do you remember? Uh, trade or politics. It was politics, right? The political systems. Being a woman. The right, the, yeah, being a woman in the Middle Ages. So? Um, 100 years war. A hundred years war in between France and uh, England. Hey, um, Japan. The Japanese um, uh, Empire, yeah, monarchy. G. Art in the Middle Ages. Art in the Middle Ages, yes. Uh, religious. All right. I think religious. The interesting thing is that we are not focusing only on Europe, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I have sent feedback to some of you and missing you too to send feedback. But the idea is that, for instance, if we are dealing with art in the Middle Ages, we are dealing with art around the world. There is this idea, we saw it in the video, that this is a, a moment of um, you know, not only the lack of mobility, the people are born in within, but also like uh, everything is contained and nothing develops. But that was not the case for the rest of the, of the world. Right? We have several cultures and civilizations in Asia, in Africa, and in the Americas. The idea is that we have a holistic view on that. Uh, how about this? Started with Charles Mann. Who was this guy? The guy who started feudalism. <laughs> <laughs> so he said one day, let's start something called feudalism. Uh, he was a king. Yeah. What? Where did that word even come from? It's a weird word. Feudalism, we came from the historians. I have it written down. Uh, actually, it comes from uh, Latin. Yes, but it and wasn't it used in the Middle Ages. And it was feudus, which means property. So you see, I mean, behind the, the, the concept, you call it the Middle Ages, uh -huh. and we talked about this last time, because you had something like uh, the antiquity, you know? We have the new age after the discovery and uh, colonization of the America, and then this period is called, supposed to be in the middle of these two, right? But feudalism <laughs> comes from uh, uh, Latin, feudus, which means um, a property. So it was an exchange of the land in exchange for, and it worked to a certain extent, and I'm saying that it was good. Somebody wanted to add something? Uh, yeah. Charlemagne, Charlemagne. Charlemagne. Charlemagne was king of Franks from 768, uh, king of the Lombards from seven, 774, and the Holy Roman Empire from 8,000. All until his death in 8,014. I will show you a map of his empire. But this is so small. I can put it up there. System as such. But he implemented the idea that there are different social classes, that you are born within that social class, and that there should be an exchange for society to work out. Okay? Okay. Really important, this guy is closely related to Catholicism or Christianity. I have a question. Go on. Who was the first king ever? <laughs> well, because like, how did, who invented basically kingdoms? Okay. No, no. Is this Morales' place? Yes. 
Um, no, I, I need the space, <laughs> but um, I can go here. As you remember, <laughs> as you remember, yeah, rather, if you can put it up on the, on the, uh, yeah, thank you. So, let's say that this is a timeline, okay? We are here. I think you we have spoken about it. About it. You will put it up, yeah? Yes. Okay. Who was the first king who invented the system of having kings? Any guess? Anybody? No. Any guess? Or is it just natural? God decided that they should be king. They claim divine right. They were chosen by God. No ideas? Maybe there was a pharaoh? Yeah, but that is already... When, when are we talking about pharaohs? I'm talking it overall. When are we talking about pharaohs? Around what time was that? For those of you who were in the seventh class, that was last year's topic. It was? With what? Yeah. Yes, it was. Egypt, um, old Egypt. Oh, yeah. With what? When were the first pharaohs? Pharaohs. Pharaoh. Pharaoh. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, I think it's like, I don't know, I'm not sure, but maybe it's sure, like somebody, um, Zeus. This Greek mythology king, the god. Ramses. Maybe it started with like, uh, like a specific group of people and it evolved into one specific person. Okay. I'm pretty sure it was even in the beginning of the world that watched about Egypt. Egypt. Can't even let me finish Jogli. You didn't even. Okay, whatever. Whatever. You can continue. Please go. No. No, thank you. Please go. Fine. No. No. I didn't understand your idea. Can you continue? <laughs> you didn't understand because you didn't even let me finish. Can you please basically, basically, um, I think it maybe it's just a guess, but it might have started like uh, there's one specific group of people who like not control, but like um, could I don't know how to say it in English. They in your language. I don't know in what language you thought it in. But it's like, knows how to not control them, but like, how to lead a group of people better, and then maybe evolved into like kings and rulers. Oh, okay. And Pharaohs were Egyptian. Uh, so in Egypt, they started naming kings Pharaohs. Yes. In the 18th century, no, yes, first king who... 18th century, for Christ. Yes. So we are speaking about year 1800 BC, right? Uh, and the first one that was so-called pharaoh was Tutmosis III. Okay, thanks. I have a question for you, and I would like to uh, ask you to use your stupid phone, smart people. What was the first civilization, and when? I don't have phone, so. You have a computer behind you, Natalia. Yeah, the like other side. It, Mesopotamia. Yeah, Mesopotamia. Yeah. Okay, when was that? Uh, Mesopotamia was Sumeria and Assyria. It's a different group because Mesopotamia is like a long period. When? Fourth millennium BC. Yeah. So it is 4000 BC, right? Almost 6000 years, no, almost no, already 6000 years ago. And the question was when, who was the first king? As such, we don't know. We know about the first civilizations, right? Because of structures, because of utensils, in some cases because of writings. Not every civilization has had writings. In fact, 
uh, when the, um, the European colonization of the Americas tried to understand the other, writing was one of the criteria. If they had writing, they were a superior culture. If they didn't have writing, they were not considered equal. Okay? So, as you remember, we were being hunters and gatherers. More or less, from 2,400, sorry, from 400,000 years until around 12,000 years ago. What happened here? Oh, okay, sorry, before that. What this meant, this uh, hunter-gatherers meant? It meant that we were in small groups. This could be one of the groups. <coughs> and uh, guess, were we static? Were we having a house here <coughs> and living around the house? What were we doing? Do you mean caves? Like, I have my own cave? No, like you have several caves and you would sleep in different places? No. Um, they moved around. They moved around. So this is a really uh, important thing. They were, um, they were nomads. They were nomads. That meant that they didn't have only one place to stay, right? They were the contrary of nomadic is sedentary. I mean, yes, they didn't like grow their like berries and stuff, and they would uh, turn out eventually. They were moving around. Yes, Natalia. Uh, according to other Mesopotamian tradition, uh, Ishiren on the king list, the first king on the world at least that we know, was Aurelian, the ruler of the city of Eritu. 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 Thank you. So in Mesopotamia, we have, yes. He was he, with a ring of two eight years, like a good All right, but let's go back a bit, okay? This was the first king of Mesopotamia, right? But already for almost 200,000 plus years, we were living under these conditions. We were hunter-gatherers. We were moving around. Why were we moving around? Because eventually because things ran out and we, uh, we did, like, the people who had Jews like, grow them back. Or, like, grow them back. Like, they did, like, the so they were already they growing food. The they they were growing food here. The no, that's what I used to they were. Uh, hunter yeah. gatherers uh, basically had to hunt their own food and make their own uh, weapons mm -hmm. with uh, wood, stones to basically survive. And they lived in temporary settlements. Yes, they had temporary settlements. They were following the animals. Yes. Okay? Being in a small group means that everybody in this small group that wants to eat needs to help. So either you're a hunter or you're a gatherer. There was no differentiation of gender. Physically, because of anatomy, most of the hunters were male, but that was not the case only. Okay? And interestingly, and this is, this is I, I would say that is the main point, this was a um, um, This was a mostly egalitarian society. That meant that everybody had more or less the same rights. Of course, let's say that Fred is super intelligent, Fred is an uh -huh. elder, and Fred knows the rules, so Fred has a bit more of extra capital. He is respected by the community. The best food is for Fred because he is you know, the person who is guided. But in reality, you didn't have kings or queens. In reality, men and women were more or less equal. Why? If Let's say that only males were the hunters. It's because they're physics. Let's say, okay? We go hunting for three days, but we come back with no food. Mm -hmm. We didn't manage, the animal, the prey just ran away, so we didn't catch anything. 
on the contrary, the gatherers, in this case, let's say, but it was not the only case, female, the women, then they gather mushrooms and they gather berries and they gather nuts, okay? So they were able to feed, to feed the whole group. That meant that the social condition, the quality of, uh, of women, was more or less at the same level as men. There wasn't this differentiation, right? It was an egalitarian society. I think it, the, the only difference that was because they think uh, like uh, like uh, the males are, are physical stronger than women. That was uh, the, let's say useful in hunting. Yeah. So but but when you get a situation in which uh, women were feeding the whole band, the whole group. Then the physical power is not yeah, a, is not a, 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 a criteria. It's, they, not, it's not a factor, right? Yeah, they, they uh, I'm I'm going to your to to your question. So uh, something happened around twelve thousand years ago that changed the whole picture. What was it? <coughs> yes, it was the development of agriculture. And the domestication of animals. So in different parts of the world, in different parts of the world, you get around the same time, and this is the interesting thing, you get different kinds of crops, but around the same time. So here it was corn. Here it was wheat. Here was also wheat. Here was rice. Okay? But around the same time, they start, they learn, and then something which is like a blurry period of history. We spoke about how history is not completed, that there is always, there are always new developments. Blurry period of history in which we don't know how everybody around the world started developing these techniques, okay? What is the interesting thing about this period? Is that with that, social structures start, this is the answer. Guys, are you with us? You sure? So let's focus more. So social structures start appearing. How do they start appearing? Let's say that we have two different bands here, two different groups, okay? We are the guys who are super laborious, you know? We get hands-on, and then we learn how to grow corn. So we start growing corn. We build our nice crop, we gather the corn, we dry it. Are we talking about our family? Or are we talking about... No, not about our family. <laughs> Will you not? Super. Yeah, I'm talking about this period when you have more food, when you have, uh, you can store, you have a stronger, bigger society. Why do people have more, more kids? Travel. Travel. Social keeps, like, community alive. More after the, like, first generation of dies. You need to have some kind of cultural reproduction, somebody who brings up their culture. Uh, most of them die, so the more... There was a really high mortality, yeah. mortality rate, so many kids would die just out of infections or... Yes, right. and? Uh, and also to let the kids to grow. Yes, yeah. what here Mr. was saying. Are you okay? Yes. Okay, can you put your phone away? Yeah, also away. What were you doing? Okay, we will get there. So, they have more kids because the kids would also work in the fields and produce more. So it was like a cycle. The more kids you have, the more kids will work in the field, the more food you will get, the more kids they will have, the more kids and society just grow. So at that point that we are speaking about the first civilization in Mesopotamia, how many people were there? Um, the no? In the first civilization in Mesopotamia. Ah. Come on, guys, you also have phones. You can look it up. You also How? have phones. Come on. How many people? Yes. Exist? Okay, I will play with you. Four million? How many? Many people lived in the biggest city in Mesopotamia. 200,000 people. 
And she said, but I'm here 200,000 people. How do you feel 200,000 people? You need a well-organized system. Uruk, in 2,300 before Christ, had 50,000. But there were others. In the end, they had so many people. Is it more or less clear? This development allows for societies to grow, allows for leaders to emerge, allows for the community to grow, and allows for kings. And the interesting thing, another thing that is very much related to this is mono monotheistic religions. Before that, or polytheistic religions. Do you know what polytheistic and monotheistic means? Before you arrive, we spoke about it, we will end earlier. Okay. So, monotheistic means that you have one God. Mono, one theistic God. Polytheistic means that you have several gods. During this time, you had animism. That meant, Sam, do you remember what animism is? No, but. Anybody? Animism? No, this is the first time I've heard of that. Really? <laughs> Animism means that that tree has a soul. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now yeah. I remember. And the stone has a soul. And the bird has a soul. And they are part of the whole ecosystem. So it's a very holistic perspective. So they go, you know, to the, for instance, when they were speaking about paganism, and uh, the, all the Estonians, the people who live in Estonia, they were going, and there are some places in Estonia where you go to the forest and you have this small stream of water, you know, and it's like sacred. These are the kind of places that... Huh? Hiet. Hiet. Is uh, that the name? I'm pretty sure yes, that's the name of the like, Islamic holy place. Okay. Thank you, I didn't know. Hiet. Hiet. Okay. So this was like the norm here. When you develop this, then the first actual structure religions start. With agriculture, it starts religion. Why? Guess. There are lots of guesses. Guess why with agriculture starts structured religion? To scare people. To scare people? There are people. Explain. There uh, could be a point. Like, um, like the, best, uh, the people realize that the best way to control the people who are like, living in the community would be with fear. OK, you are getting to a meta-analysis. If you don't do what I tell you, God will punish you. If you don't do what I tell you, then my imaginary friend will punish you. Okay, that might be a point, but it is not related to agriculture. Um, or raising food. I think about like if they were scared, it might have been like quite good like hey, I'll stop. You have to like pray to the rain or something. Yes. So this is the moment in which people relate religion to good crops. So, we need to make an offer to the God gods, this land, and the blood, so that we will get a good crop in the future, right? This is the beginning, and it has to do also with this roles. So there, is, there are some people who take this role of being the spiritual leaders. Guys, we need to organize a sacrifice. I propose Ennis. <laughs> I agree. Sorry. I agree. I agree. <laughs> no bread, everybody. I hate bread. <laughs> So, uh, you know, because it is true, I had a vision last night, and if we don't <laughs> sacrifice Enes, we will have a bad crop. Oh, Fear no. is manipulating certain, certain decisions, right? I think that's my Don't worry, you are saying. Trevor. <laughs> or not. Trevor. Uh, Mr. Very Important, uh, leader of our uh, culture, sir, I think you might have a mental illness. I think you talk <laughs> about that. It is personal. <laughs> it is personal. Okay, uh, anybody um, would like to? Yes. Like, uh, when, they, when you tell about gods, I remember that they create gods for nature, like uh, gods like for nature, like Gaia, it's uh, such a great, ah, okay. uh, great item, the, the, the god of nature. Yes, then you're saying that how, how the, the, um, the first ideas of supernatural forces yeah. come through... Uh, 
an attempt to explain nature. So yeah. why is there thunder? It's because there is the God, blah, 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 that is who's super angry at us. Yeah. Right? Or why the plants are growing? It's because the gods, the remote or Gaia is happy with us. Something that we will watch in a moment, we are going to watch two short videos about the Middle Ages. I remind you, this place, we will have like 10, 15 minutes to work on our project, and I will work with you two on the question, okay? I will give feedback on that. But this is not the place to work on the project. When we are having the other meeting, when I'm having the other meeting with the student group, you guys need to be engaged in your projects. So that you come here and you say, well, I have a question, then we can get into the question. But this is not the moment to start reading the book or start uh, checking the webpage. Uh, when will we have to present? Thank you for asking that. So um, we will have the last um, by the 13th of March. 13th of March. So this is two weeks after the school break. So if we could make it that we use the 6th and the 13th of March for presentations, we will be okay. Uh, but uh, presentations, yeah. we don't have to do slides this time. No, so we, we are trying to do something different, mm -hmm. right? So you can make a podcast, you can make a video, you can make a series of posters, you can make present uh, uh, exhibition, right? You can enact, let's say that I am somebody who traveled from the Middle Ages in Japan. Natalia, I am somebody who traveled from Japan the Middle Ages and I'm here through a time machine, and you are asking me questions about Japan in the Middle Ages. That could be a nice, interesting possibility for presentation, okay? For you sharing the, the information. Any questions about this? Is feudalism clear? Yeah. Okay, this system was messed up. The system that we were speaking about, um, uh, no social mobility, was super messed up, because people didn't have control over their lives. There was one thing which is particularly shocking, it was the right of the first night, mm -hmm. for instance. Women, young women, will be forced to ma get married around 13, 14 years of age, yes. By 16, 17, they will have already three or four children. And the first night, for instance, the, the, the couple, you know, the, you're, you're, you're getting married. Um, the oh, king oh. or the nobles. The king or the nobles, they had the right to spend the first night with the bride. What? Crazy stuff. So this is a period in which most of the stuff that you will find out is it doesn't make sense nowadays. Because it, it was specifically needs to be understood within that system, that system of exchange, okay? Which was not equal or egalitarian. Now, I would like to watch these two uh, uh, short documentaries, and this will inform also the way how you ask your questions in regards to... Also called the Dark Ages, or medieval times, most people associate this time with brutal cruelty, devastating wars, and great plagues. Worse, it's often considered as a time when society, academics, and the arts did a backward slide. So it's a system of exchange. We have the king owning all the land, who gives the land to the nobles, he gives power. In exchange, he gets army, and he also gets taxes, right? Because these guys are the ones who are getting food. So he gets taxes, which is money. The nobles, in turn, give the land to the peasants in exchange for food, labor, and whenever there is a war, soldiers, right? The church would also get young people to work as priests. The Lord and the Vassas, yes, they had some kind of, uh, of relationship, right? Uh, it's interesting because usually it is said that uh, the, the, the Lord would give the vassal the land and in exchange would get loyalty and protection. But this logic, this narrative was a bit different in the sense that it was, I am the Lord, you are the peasant, I give you, I give you the land and you need to pay taxes. And I will offer you protection. You brought the protection here. So it wasn't only the land, it was also protection. But you might ask, protection against what? Against whom? Me. Against Natalia. 
<laughs> against what? Against? Against uh, Erosos and bandits, for example. Bandits? Other kings or nobles who want to get the land or the wall. So they would, again, the battle, I am the noble, right? I will protect you from Ennis, because Ennis wants to make you good. <coughs> now, you need to pay me for that, right? Because if you don't pay me, I will take your good. So it was either like, you're my friend or you're my enemy situation, right? These people had very little to choose from. Yes, sir. Can we open a window, please? Yes, yeah. but we don't have the... One second, please. Yeah, it is very likely. Yeah, you're very likely to steal people. I would punish them. And it's very likely to take your food, yeah. I've already taken your food. I've taken your food. Yeah, because I allow you to do this. You're Can we go to another room? It's not that hot, y'all. Why are you guys wearing sweaters? Can we can you open it guys? Another room? To this one? Yeah, but the problem is that the data projector there is not working very well. Can you open it, please? Okay. This was the duration. It lasted for around Six centuries. You said, how did it end? Do you want to write it down? I would like to ask you before that. I would like to ask you guys: Is everything here? How? How? Right. I mean, we have covered only one part. I can't hear you. The thing with the um, the thing with the relationships with the land. This is, let's say, the economic relationship, right? What about the rest? Uh, is there anything that we don't have here? Mm -hmm. The what? Who started? Okay. And then you will write how did it end? 